Which position groups still have unanswered questions after the 2023 NFL Draft? All that and more this episode of the Locked On Cowboys Podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every Locked day. On. Locked On. Locked, Locked On. Locked On Cowboys. Locked On Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. And joining me today, as always, is Landon McCool. Check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. Landon, today we are talking about the position groups on the Dallas Cowboys that still have some unanswered questions after the 2023 NFL Draft. I want to start with wide receiver because yeah. this is a position that the Cowboys spent, I believe, nine of their 30 visits on in the yeah. NFL draft, yeah. seven of which were guys that were selected in the top 50 of the draft. And the only receiver that they picked came with their final selection in the seventh round. Uh, what's going on with the Cowboys wide receiver situation? It's an interesting group, you know, to think about because, look, obviously throughout the draft process, because of everything that we saw we had to think that that wide receiver was was on the was on the list of of, of a position that the Cowboys were going to target highly. Turns out they didn't. They passed on pass catcher uh, in the first round. They took a tight end in the second round, but then they waited all the way till day three at the end of day three to take their first wide receiver. So uh, I think that the room is really interesting because you clearly have a number one and number two in in CD Lamb and Brandon Cooks. Michael Gallup, you know, is still kind of coming back from the injury. As we all know, he kind of had a disappointing season, didn't come back the way we wanted to. There's still some hope that he could, you know, regain some form uh, that he had previously. And then you, you've got some folks after that, after that, who are, have a, a story to tell, right? Like you got Simi Fahoku, who is, you know, kind of on his last year. He's got, he's been in the bottom of the roster for a while now. He took, I think, a pretty significant step forward last year. Uh, but needs to take an even further step if he's going to be uh, an active part of this roster mm -hmm. during week to week and someone who's going to get on the field. Jalen Tolbert, obviously a third round pick, a guy that 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 didn't get on the field at all, basically had a red shirt year because of the reasons that we've talked about these last few episodes about special teams and a lack of opportunity to get on the game day roster, didn't get a chance to develop. So there's lots of anticipation about what he could do. And then you've got guys that are, you know, kind of like the Cavante Turpins, the Dennis Houstons who you know, Turpin has a role as a special teams player, but not so much as a wide receiver. And certainly you, you don't have very much of any role for uh, Dennis Houston or, or, or some of these uh, Don Terrio Drummonds uh, right now. You know, right. uh, obviously Houston was a week one starter because for, due to some injury stuff. But I think that at the, at the same time, you, you, you don't necessarily ex expect him to go into week one of this year to, with that same sort of situation. So uh, I, I think for, for me, the, the room – uh, definitely had some some places where you felt like you could add some talent, um, mm -hmm. but since they didn't, it's going to be a very interesting kind of roster churn that happens somewhere around wide receiver three through six. Honestly, yeah, and it was. I I, I wonder back to the draft. I wonder if they were really interested in drafting a receiver, but it just yeah. didn't work out because remember they brought in Quentin Johnson, Jackson Smith, the Jigba, and Zay Flowers. Yeah, and I believe all those guys were off the board by pick. 22 right yeah. so then you look in the second round and the guy that they kind of had in that range was jonathan mingo who in at the top of the second round right yeah. so like yeah maybe it just didn't line up i know rashi rice ended up i i think he might have been a target he ended up going in the second round maybe the draft just didn't line up well for them to take a receiver but it's clear they were interested in adding somebody else. And I don't know if it's as an insurance policy in case Michael Gallup's not ready, whether they just wanted to add a fourth guy because they wanted to be a little bit more dynamic. I don't know, uh, but it's clear. They, I think they're still looking to potentially upgrade this position. Like, I don't know if they want to rely on Jalen Tolbert to be the number four guy. Yeah, it'll be interesting Interesting to see exactly you know how the next few weeks and, and frankly through training camp kind of plays out because – uh, it, it'll give us a good indication of exactly how much leash they're, they're willing to give Jalen Tolbert to kind of earn that fourth spot. And, and, and if they don't go out and, and 
uh, you know, kick the tires on maybe some veteran folks or at least see what's available uh, around cut down time for yep. uh, potential like trade or something like that. So um, I, I have a feeling that they're going to give Tolbert, you know, now that they've kind of gone through the draft and they didn't get anything that way, you know, the, the amount of talent, the, the type of talent that you would be able to get on the street, off the street right now or at cut down, um, it, it, it may not be so it may not move the needle too much more than, than having a successful Jalen Tolbert season if you're yes. able to manufacture that. It, so I think it makes sense that the Cowboys try to give him opportunities in, in training camp and then see what they do after a couple of weeks. And on top of that, I wonder if the receivers are going to be available in early September might even be better than what are available right now. Like uh, on a different show, I was talking about the bears have all these receivers. Maybe yeah. they would move on from Darnell Mooney. He was in the last mm-hmm. year of his contract. Maybe that's something that Dallas would be interested in, but I agree with you. I think now they're just going to give all these young kids as many snaps as possible. And if they have to go out and get a veteran, after cut down day, they do it. But I, I just don't see a rush to go do it now. And let's also keep in mind that there are guys out there like T.Y. Hilton who literally will probably wait until well into the regular season before they even consider signing uh, with a team. Nice. So if, if you're looking for something, you know, a little bit later, if you need to sign in, uh, yeah. then 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 you've got that option later down the road too. Uh, we we talked about the left guard spot a lot, the offensive yeah. line. By now, we kind of. We know it's going to be a combination of either Chuma Doga or maybe Tyler Smith or maybe Tyron Smith playing left tackle. We don't know, but we, we spent a lot of time on that. One more position on offense. I, I wanted to just touch on really quickly. Jerry Jones and Mike McCarthy said, we need to do a better job of drafting quarterbacks, right? We need to draft a quarterback to develop him and get him in our quarterback room. The Cowboys did not draft a quarterback at all for like the fifth straight year at all. So I, I and, mean, and they didn't get an undrafted free agent. I mean, they had to yeah, sign a street free agent basically yeah, to, to facilitate so, college, you know, for practices this weekend. So, which makes me think it's just going to be Dak and Cooper Rush with maybe Will Greer on the practice squad this year, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, I, you know, I think at this point they have a good backup. I, I think that they have a decent number three, like a guy that, you know, that has something to him. You know, I don't know how, how much more he's going to develop or, you know, if he's ever going to be more than what he is, but he's decent. So it, it, there's definitely not necessarily somebody on the street that's better than, than what you've got, you know? Yeah. So I think it's, this is another position that you've, you kind of didn't have, you didn't get your opportunity in the draft. Uh, and so the the talent, the window for getting the kind of talent you want at the position is probably closed until, you know, like we said, cut down times, time for other teams to kind of look Which, at their situations and maybe there will be guys more. available. Like if you oh, want yeah. to sign somebody to replace Will Greer as that third quarterback option, yeah. there will be guys out there who maybe we're surprised at. Like I remember, I think it was last year, Kellen Mond got released by the Vikings yeah. going into year two. There'll be players like that available if the Cowboys want just to switch out that number three quarterback and churn the bottom of the roster. So again, I don't see them making a move at the quarterback position anytime soon. Yeah. I, I think, I think that that opportunity is kind of passed the by, yeah. which is fine. They're not in a dangerous spot. You know, they're in a, no, they have what they fine. need is their starting quarterback. They have a backup quarterback. They even have a third string guy. So yeah. if someone, someone intrigues them, they'll plug them in, but they're not in a desperate spot. No. Drafting the quarterback thing is more about, opportunity right like about have what if you hit on a guy it's so valuable if you hit on a guy down roster so if they miss that chance it's not the end of the world it certainly isn't going to cripple the team right yeah i mean i think the fact that like both aiden o'connell and clayton toon went before their fourth round pick on top yeah. of spencer bennett and yeah. some D, uh, dtr went in the fourth round i mm-hmm. believe i mean we just had jake hayner fourth round quarter we had so many quarterbacks go before the cowboys pick in the fourth round that they almost had no choice but to just pass on those guys and wait until next year. So uh, let's get to the defensive side of the ball because there's still a lot of questions uh, for certain players on that side. Uh, let's do that when we get back. This episode is brought to you by Built Bar. Are you looking for a delicious snack but don't want all of the sugar and the calories? Then you need to try the best protein bar ever. It's Built Bar. You've got to try this by now. It's absolutely fantastic. If you're looking to make healthier snack choices as we head into summer, but you don't want to compromise on the taste, Built Bars and Built Puffs are there for you. They are healthy. They taste amazing. You don't even know that they're good for you because they're covered in 100% real dark chocolate. That's right, real dark chocolate. And they come in so many unbelievably great flavors, including churro, peanut butter brownie, and cookies and cream. Not sure how Built does it, but 
only 130 calories, only four grams of sugar, but 17 grams of protein. And now you don't even have to wait to get a box. You can still go to bill.com. You can place your orders over there. But if you live near a Walmart, run into the pharmacy section, grab a four bar box of cookies and cream, the double chocolate bar, which I love, or the coconut puff. Or if you live close to a Sam's club, like I happen to run in, grab a 13 bar box with some of the hit flavors, including brownie batter puff and churro puff. And you can thank us later. All right, we want to thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen every day. Every day or tomorrow in the show, Landon and I going through the uh, the schedule release, one mm. of the most ridiculous days of the year. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about the games that we're the most excited to see, such as Cowboys Giants Sunday Night Football Week One. I don't know if that's out there. Never, yeah. never, never seen one of those before, Marcus. I uh... <laughs> we got a we got another Sunday Night Football game between 49ers and Cowboys, like in Week Five. That'll be fun. I think maybe playing the NFC East rival on Thanksgiving. We'll talk about all that tomorrow, so make sure you, you check it out. All right, let's uh, let's talk about a couple other positions that the Cowboys didn't really address early in the draft, and let's start with cornerback. Uh, they had interest. Joey Porter, they had a first-round grade on. They decided to pass on him in round one. They loved Emmanuel Forbes. It sounds like that was a target for the, them that ended up getting picked by Washington, I believe, at 16. Um what are your thoughts on the Cowboys not adding a top 150 cornerback in this class? Well, I kind of think, you know, it's it's sort of similar to running uh, wide receiver, right? Where I feel like they did some work to make the immediate situation good, right? Like they in both the in both wide receiver and corner, obviously they they added uh Stefan Gilmore uh, and Brandon Cooks respectively, right? So that mm-hmm. they would the up front, you know, you know who your top guys are. I think what they were trying to do with each position is if there was talent to add a, a guy who could be, you know, take over those spots a, a year from now, two years from now at either wide receiver or corner, that's what they were looking to do. Right. So, mm-hmm. um, and I think, you know, unfortunately for them or, or, you know, however you want to word it, it just didn't, it didn't work out t- uh, value wise. They, they ended up taking different players. So they're not in bad spots in either one of these uh, positions. In fact, that they're, they're very good spots, but they didn't get to add kind of the future piece that they were hoping to for, um, you know, for, for kind of long-term stability and then obviously depth. So I, I think you go into the season with, at the cornerback position Looking at you know a look a very solid four deep right <laughs> like yeah. you've got Trayvon Diggs and Stephon Gilmore Jordan we got to remember Jordan Lewis coming back hopefully healthy uh, and then obviously Deron Bland can kind of fit in all of those four spots we've seen him or all those three spots we've seen him play inside we've seen him play outside um, so I, I think as far as the top end of the of the cornerback room looks it looks pretty darn good yeah. Um, and then you add in, you know, guys like Nashawn Wright, who you're hoping can take a step, or and Kelvin Joseph, who just kind of perpetually waiting for him to take the step. So, um, you know, and 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 and, and Israel Makamu is a guy who was a safety, who is a safety, who you saw play some pretty solid snaps as a nickel yeah. like, if you needed him. So, I think the Cowboys are covered <laughs> in in that area. Oh, if pun. excuse the pun, yeah, uh, <laughs> but but you know that there also is opportunity for the, for them to get better. You know, if if either one of Kelvin Joseph or Nation Wright takes a step this year, that would be absolutely huge. Um, but if they don't, honestly, you could see someone who was a, a second or third round pick not on this roster by the end of the of training camp. You know, oh, I, because I it's either a trade a- or a cut, right? I mean, I would almost be shocked if both Nation Wright and Kelvin Joseph were on the team Made it. this year. Yeah. I mean, I there, mean there's numbers. almost just no way, right? You look at the yeah. numbers. You, you you mentioned the top four. We know that they're going to keep at least at least one special teams corner, whether that's Eric Scott or whether you want to call CJ Goodwin that guy, right? So that's is already this the year? five. Is this the year they get rid of Goodwin? No. Is this the yeah? You don't think no. so? It's like it's like the ants and the uh, the nuclear bomb, right? They're just both, all three of those are gonna stay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's bad enough. Uh, anyways, but I, I just don't see any way that both those guys make the roster. In fact, I think there's a better chance that neither of them make the team than both do. I really, I honestly, I, I can see a situation where the Cowboys just move on from both Nation Wright and Calvin Joseph, and it's like, hey. We've got Eric Scott, who we traded, you know, up for. He's going to be our fifth corner. We're going to keep CJ Goodwin as our sixth corner, and we're moving on. 
Yeah, I mean, honestly, that that seems like that could be a very high possibility. The Cowboys just have so many numbers at this point, and and like we mentioned, it's it's not like, um, you know, it's not like they don't have talent to supply the up top. If if yeah. if Kelvin Joseph can't make him break the 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 top four, and he's going to cost you as much as what a second round pick does, you know, in his fourth year. Uh, you know, there, there's there's every reason to, to to try to ship him off or or let him go. You know, look, I, I think that what you probably won't do is, uh, you know, uh, what may happen to Kelvin Joseph is that that it comes down to deciding between him and CJ Goodwin, and and honestly, I don't like Kelvin you know, Joseph's odds. Though. I don't like Kelvin Joseph's odds, despite the fact that you you feel like there's more to him as as far as playing on the uh, defense. There's not that much more, so. Uh, yeah, I think the the cornerback position is was going to be interesting regardless. Like, um, uh, especially especially if they had drafted somebody high, um, but but even now it's it's still going to be a battle, an incredible battle, especially in that middle range of of guys for uh, trying to earn a, a kind of rotational spot as the fifth or yeah. sixth co- corner on this team. The, the one guy that I'm going to circle is. Jordan Lewis, because we love Jordan Lewis. I, yeah. I, we love the fact that he can play in the slot. You can use him all over the field. But if he's just – to me, there's multiple things that could happen here. Right? Number one, what if he's just not healthy? Right? Like, yeah. What if it's clear he's just lost his quickness? Not the same, yeah. Right. You could move on from him, say, $5 million, which that's not an insignificant amount of money. That would be able to pay for your entire tight end room for the next three years. Like, <laughs> It's not insignificant. It's not nothing. Right. The other thing is I could see a lot of teams around the league having interest in Jordan Lewis. Go look at some of the AFC contenders and their slot cornerback situations, and it's bad, right? So I could see a team wanting to flip a fifth-round pick for Jordan Lewis because his contract's cheap and he could be an instant starter. And then on top of that, the Cowboys have depth. Like what if Miles Brooks, a corner that we talked about, I believe, earlier this week, an undrafted free agent from Law Tech, what if he's just really good and the Cowboys can't, afford to cut him maybe you do move on from jordan lewis and save the money there or what if kelvin joseph yeah i was just gonna finally say makes that leap or nation Wright makes that yep. leap like i i don't want to say jordan lewis's spot is in jeopardy but no. i do wonder if the cowboys could do some things maybe with jordan lewis if thing basically if it's close the tiebreaker goes to the younger yeah super guy. Uh, i would I'll, yeah I, I would phrase it like this if if any of those down roster corners uh, take a leap uh, uh, enough of a leap that the Cowboys feel comfortable with them playing regularly on defense. I think Jordan Lewis is, is likely to get moved, uh, you know, whether that's through a trade or, you know, maybe an outright release if they can't find another partner, just because of the money you mentioned that they, the Cowboys are big on serving youth. They don't necessarily need Jordan Lewis in that kind of veteran corner role anymore, because first of all, I mean, Diggs is in his you know third year, and and on top of that, you've also brought in Stephon Gilmore, who could obviously play that role. So, I, I, yeah, I love Jordan Lewis. I, I want him on the team. Um, but if if one of your young corners steps up, there's just not a lot of room at the end for him. Uh, and frankly, for his career, I, I think it would be better to like go to some place where he will play. get a, a real opportunity to play uh, and be part of a team uh, that that can you know that could use him. So. I think it could, if, if, if best case scenario, you've got Nation Wright shows up and he knows what he's he's co- more comfortable in man. You got Kelvin Joseph who's who's recommitted to to the game and is is unlocked his potential, uh, and then suddenly you've got champagne problems. You've got too many corners. Yeah. You don't know what to do with. Uh, I have a feeling that you'll find a, a a market for a valuable starting nickel corner in this league. I have no doubt. There's going to be teams interested in him. Uh, I wouldn't rule out Baltimore, who his mm-hmm. former defensive coordinator is the defensive coordinator in Baltimore right now. I think that makes a lot of sense. So yep. keep an eye on Jordan Lewis. Let's uh, let's talk about a couple more positions that have some unanswered questions uh, when we get back. All right, Landon, we were talking about the position groups that the Cowboys did not really address in the 2023 NFL draft. Let's first start with safety. Not mm-hmm. that there's any unanswered questions, but they literally did not add a safety, yeah. I believe, in yeah. the draft or in free agency. Or in free agency, yeah. Which is pretty wild. Yeah. I mean, that position, it, it, it's almost too deep. So just to run through it really quick, it's J. Ron Curse. Well, it's 3D, if you will. Donovan Wilson, right? <laughs> there, there's just three. 
Who the, <laughs> I got the three yeah. are gonna play a lot, right? Yeah. Then you have Israel Makamu, who the Cowboys started to use more at the end of the season, right? Mm-hmm. It's Marquise Bell, who was yeah. undrafted free agent last <laughs> year, who played, who was on the roster for every single game, okay? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then it was Tyler Coyle, who the Cowboys brought up to the active roster at the end of the year because some teams were sniffing around, played in the yep. slot. And then it's Wanye Thomas, another safety that they signed last they year like. on the free agency, yeah. who yeah. they gave a bunch of money to. And mm-hmm. oh, by the way, one more guy that they added at the end of the year that people probably don't remember. They actually added this guy in January. Sheldrick yeah. Redwine, a safety who played at Miami, who was like an early day three pick by the, mm-hmm. uh, I think it was by the Browns, who's played a lot in the NFL, is a fantastic athlete. I, I understand why they didn't draft the safety. This, this is one of the most, I, and it's unbelievable that the Cowboys have depth at safety. I still can't get over yeah, it. that. That part is just, it's like cognitive dissonance. I do not understand how that's possible. I don't get Let, it. Let's take the top three guys out of the conversation for right now, because I think we, we know very much know what, what's going to happen there. It's the conversation of what's interesting starts with Israel Makamu because yep. you want to start to get Makamu more snaps. He clearly played fantastic football when you gave him opportunities. Uh, but the problem becomes that you've got three guys above him that clearly you do not want to take off the field. And, um, and, and I think the other thing that we should start looking into a little bit more is, is Israel Makamu an actual good fit for the uh the jaron curse rule no because i don't think so i i don't think he is necessarily and i think the, the you know this is more of a long-term question what's going to happen when when curse is gone who's going to play that role i think that that likely will need to be marquise bell right um so uh, <sighs> so how do you hold maybe, on to all I the mean, honestly maybe when jaron curse leaves maybe that's just not a role right i i think maybe when is pretty open to just using his players in the best way possible and maybe you just don't you don't use a player like that maybe you have something different like an israel makamu right so to kind of get back to the the makamu part though how do we get how do you get him on the field so i I wonder if they aren't going to have packages where he comes in and plays nickel i i I wonder if they aren't going to have some sort of special packages where he's just the third safety for some reason i just have a hard time as good as curse and wilson and hooker have been and they've been fantastic i mean honestly I, I can't think of a better safety situation the Cowboys have had ever, I guess. Now that I say that, with, like, and Roy Williams, like in the early days of that, I, I, I think I think that we even found out that that was mostly Woodson. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think I, I think as far as numbers and depth, the Cowboys are at, at, at the highest they've been. So the question was, how do you get McCombs on the field? You have to find ways to, to, to a special packages to put him in. You have to find nickel stuff. Then you've got two other guys behind him that you also are going to want to start trying to play this year because you can't hide these guys anymore. Mm-hmm. Like if you want them to play, they're going to need to play. Tyler Coyle, Marquise Bell, both guys that you know, in consecutive years came in and were very well hyped up by this coaching staff that thought that these guys could play. And, and from what you see so far, I think that they, they they've shown you something. Um, so it's it's going to be interesting to see how many of these these guys that the Cowboys keep. Because they really like those guys in Bell and Coyle, and I think that there's they're part of their futures plan. And and I, like you said, they called up Coyle to the to the pra- from the practice squad to protect him because pe- teams are already starting to sniff around on him. So, and then that leaves Wanye Thomas, who they love, and and Sheldrick, Sheldrick Redwine, who uh, of those bottom four guys has the most playing experience and, yeah, and, and has, the biggest pedigree, know, right? And the biggest pedigree. So uh, it's. It's an odd group to have well, thorough depth in, like so much depth that you honestly don't know what to do with some of the bottom roster guys. Right, and I would say that I think for most teams, the the rational thing would be like, hey, trade one of these guys so you can get some more opportunities on the field. But <laughs> it's weird. You're not trading Donovan Wilson after giving him a contract. It's just yeah. not happening. No. You're not trading Malik Cooker on the last year of his deal because teams could have signed him, what, two years ago? after he showed you know, that he could play a little bit and they had no interest in doing so because of the injury history. And J. Ron Curse is a safety that nobody wanted who's in his 30s now, who's a box safety, which just not that appealing. So it's it's weird. The Cowboys have this awesome safety room with zero trade value. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's bonkers. Yeah, honestly, the guys that probably have trade value are the less 
you know, like, Curse probably has. I mean, uh, 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 Makamu probably oh, has some trade but trade you don't value, but, but you don't want to trade him. It, yeah, because you're not going to get what you. Yeah, exactly. Because exactly. he's worth more than whatever you're going to get from him in the trade. So, and and honestly, for completely different reasons, you could say the same thing about the other the top three guys, right? Yeah, like yeah. You, 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 what you would get in a trade, you wouldn't trade them for. So right. there's no um, point doing that, right? Yeah. So I, I think that you know, part of me is is. Uh, happy because i think this is a really fantastic uh, uh safety room uh but it's it's gonna cause some consternation as we get closer to cut down day because you're gonna want to try to hold on to at least six of these guys and probably only gonna be able to hold on my, to five of them my only fear is that i think mokamu and like marquis bell are too good of players to play like a combined 15 snaps on defense a game right will there eventually be some hard feelings if those guys aren't getting bigger roles on defense it's possible, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I think you, you know, there's a countdown on how long this is gonna. These all three of these guys are gonna still be here, so I, I think that there's a chance that I think there's a chance both, that Wilson's the only one left after this year. Yeah, I think that, that that's a good chance too. So I think that there's a, an opportunity for these guys to kind of continue to develop, and that's you know another interesting question is who's the best hooker backup, right? There's like. Not one. That, that's, that's the issue. I think they don't Wilson is the best hooker backup, right? Which I don't really want Donovan Wilson playing free safety either. You know, no. So I, I, I'm interested to see if if they don't work Tyler Coyle more in that role this year, awesome. um, and just and see if he can kind of handle that. Just because I feel like he's he's probably the best. Or I mean, Wanye Thomas is honestly probably the best. Yes, I would fit agree. for that position. But I don't know that he's any better than Tyler Coyle or Marquise no. Bell. To be straightforward, uh, the last position, really quickly, because. They didn't do anything in free agency. They didn't draft a guy. They didn't sign anybody as an undrafted free agent as kicker. And I know we kind of laugh at about this position a lot, but like part of me wonders, like, did they want to draft a kicker in this class and hoping to get like Jake Moody from Michigan in the sixth and seventh round? We had, I think, four kickers drafted, one of which went in the third round, one of which went in the fourth round. Do they just are they just waiting here? Because I, I think I think the only kicker on the roster is it Tristan Vicentendo, I believe. Vis Viscano, Viscano. Viscano. Yeah, I mean that's the um, only kicker. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, talking about kickers again. Um, I I tend to think that yes, they probably would have drafted that kicker if he had fallen in a range that they were comfortable with. I feel like that range was at least two rounds lower than where he did at get least, drafted. At least. Um. And I, you know, so that's, I think it's similar to the, like they had a, a wide receiver in corner where they, you know, they had interest there if, if the right value is there, but it didn't work out. So I think for kicker, you know, you see what's out on the street, you bring them all in, you try them out. I mean, there's one veteran kicker that's out there with a big name. I don't, yeah, but Robbie Gould can't kick the ball past 40 yards. <laughs> I know, so that's the issue, right? So like you're still going to need either another kicker. I mean, that's the problem. If you sign Robbie Gould, you're going to have to get another kicker. Like, you have to get a second kicker. Because you have to do somebody that can do the kickoffs as well. Because Brian Anger can't do kickoffs. So you've got to have a third kicker, which no we thanks. Cowboys have done before. But with this roster, I like I really have a hard time believing it. I'm Googling to see how old David Bueller is now <laughs> because they could use him. I bet he could. I bet he could beat any of these uh, kickers in a race. Right? Still, well, I mean, he also might be able to help out linebacker. The NFL has you know, got a lot smaller at linebacker. Yeah, that's since true. Then, so he would probably be one of the heavier linebackers. Like, I don't know. I don't know what they do at kicker. It's uh, part of me wonders if they just if they just don't wait until like the start of the season just to see who gets cut and see which other teams have kickers. What that else? Well, what else is there to do? I, I, I look. Know. I mean, yeah. With kickers, it's like look. There's four of them. All right. Outside of that, it's a crapshoot. All right. So find a guy who you think is doing well at the time, and then just hope for the best. Like that's Mason Crosby's a free agent. Okay. Oh, you know, like the, the, you can give me a, a list of a hundred names. Honestly, I, I I don't know how they're cook, kicking at this very moment, which is all that matters. You know, like I, it doesn't matter how many kicks he's made in the last 10, 15 years or extra points he made last year. It, it doesn't seem to really matter. Brett Marr. Oh yeah. I like that guy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's brutal. It's a one position that could once again, hurt the Cowboys playoff chances, but we knew that going into the draft. I don't think the draft was going to change anything. So nothing has changed since, since the end of the season. 
That's why we at least have to, to mention it. But that is it for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in. We want to thank you for making Lockdown Cowboys your first listen every day. Uh, be sure to subscribe on YouTube, wherever you get your podcast. Go check out Landon uh, on Twitter, at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher. We'll see you guys next time.